What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be diving into all the wiring issues on this 1992 XJ600 Seca 2. In this video I'm going to be going over the battery to ignition wiring, the starter wiring, the right control, the right handle grip wiring along with the turn signal wiring at the left hand here. Now it gets a little confusing because I have a Canadian model bike which has daytime running lights which makes things a little bit more confusing but we should be able to make it work so come along like, like this is wired. It's rather simple, but looking at a complicated diagram like even the one in the Haynes manual can make the process of fixing this bike very overwhelming. So before we get into that, please smash the like and subscribe button, it would really help me out. Now let's go! So to thicken the plot with my turn signals, when I turn the key on, the front lights come on, but the rear two lights do not. When I push the trigger left and right, as you would when you're trying to indicate left or right, nothing changes. There's no flasher blinking sound, there's no relay clicking on and off, but when I do move the switch back and forth like left and right and press it in to cancel, it does feel normal. So I feel like the action inside here for the contacts of the switch might be alright, but it's probably worthwhile checking into this to figure that out. My first two questions are, why did the back not illuminate, and why do I not hear a clicking sound? So I'm going to dive into that first, figure out if there's a grounding or power issue in the back, or if the relay in the middle is just completely bumped. On the dash with the key on, I also don't get any lights when I flick left and right. The only light I do get is the high beam light. I don't even get a neutral light or an oil light. The speedometer works, but the tachometer doesn't. So it leaves me thinking there's more than just a turn signal issue with this bike. All right, some progress has been made. I've discovered that this is the flasher relay says Omron G8A10103. That's the flasher relay. You can also identify it because it has uh, three wires, black with white dot, brown with white stripe, and brown wire. Just three wires going into it. This is the flasher relay for certain. The progress I've discovered poking around is that I had a blown fuse. Yeah, can't believe I didn't pick this up sooner. Now that I fixed the broken fuse, I have a neutral light like you can see there. And when I hit the button, I also get a signal. And you can also hear the flasher relay clicking. Okay, I wasn't satisfied with just having a fuse fix the problem, so I decided to dive deep into the wiring here. And I wanna tell you what I've learned. So, power comes off your positive, duh. Through this big red cable, it goes to your starter post, and that's where this small red wire is shared. This small red wire uh, feeds power to your main fuse, which is your 30 amp right here. The 30 amp conducts power through the harness up to the ignition cylinder at the top there. The ignition cylinder gets its power in from the red wire here, and then power out on this blue wire. The blue wire connects to the other half of the wiring harness, which is a blue and red stripe wire. This blue and red stripe wire sends power all the way back to your fuse box here to power everything else, such as your signals. The brown wire coming out of your ignition cylinder, your lock cylinder, that connects also to another brown wire is the ground for the three wire system that works to your ignition cylinder. Power is then sent from the fuse box up through this harness connector right here at the front. Power then comes in on this connector. It comes in on a red and white and leaves on a red and black. That red and black wire comes all the way down to your main relay. This is your main relay box that works most of the action on the bike. It's a uh, 2UJ-81950. This is the main relay box. You can tell because when you turn on the kill switch, this clicks. This relay will send power to your starter switch on your right handle grip that'll enable you to start the bike, as well as manage power to your neutral safety and your oil light. I've also discovered that my horn does work. It just uh, needed a bumping. Beep. I'm pressing the button and then just giving it a little beep. Tap, and it seems to work. Gotta replace it though. Can't be tapping my horn on the road. And that's a wrap on fixing the wiring problems in this 92 XJ600 Seca 2. Who'd have known that a fuse could cause so many problems? I feel kind of dumb for not realizing that it was just a fuse earlier on, but you know, you live and you learn. I'll check a fuse sooner next time. I hope you were able to take something away from this video. There's a lot that goes on to even an old bike like this, and there's even more going on in a newer bike like the FZ6. Now, a lot of people say like, oh, I like old bikes because they're so simple, but in reality, I'd much rather work on something like a modern 2007 FZ6 because the service manuals are a little bit better written 
and the information is a little bit more available and there's more people out there actually working on the bikes so you can understand and get more feedback from them and their process. So in my opinion, this idea of like old is simple and old is better eh, isn't necessarily true. I'd say this bike is just as complicated as the FZ6. The FZ6 just has a little bit more nicer features like fuel injection. So if this video helped you out, please smash like and subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching and as always, have a good day.